Hey yo doers, what's up? It's your boy Happy Chap here. Look it, on this episode, we're gonna build the villager trading hall. People call this a trading hall, but all, all it is is just a curing station. I mean, the trading hall is the actual hall itself. This is a curing station, so we take zombified villagers, or we take villagers, turn them into zombies, and then cure them back into regular villagers, so that way they are capable of giving us our discounted trades. The items that you're gonna need for this build are pretty straightforward. You're gonna need two sticky pistons, two regular pistons, two dispensers, a bunch just bring a whole stack of builder blocks with you bring a half stack of glass a repeater bring a bunch of redstone torches you're only going to need three for the initial build but you do need to power the rail systems afterwards then you're going to need at least 12 redstone dust with two trap doors three buttons a lever a detector rail an activator rail and then you'll need your rails and minecart system in order to transfer your villagers in and out of the farm so now let's get into the build Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do for this build is dig down two blocks into the ground and place a piston facing up. Then beside the piston, you're gonna put two blocks on top of each other, just like that. Now what you're gonna do is in front of the piston, you're gonna dig out one block and place your dispenser in the ground facing up with a solid block beside it and another dispenser facing in just like that. Coming off the corner of this dispenser in the ground, you're gonna dig out one block like so, place a piece of redstone in the bottom and then place a solid block above it, kind of containing everything as is. Next, what you're going to do is you're gonna jump up and place a piece of redstone dust on top of this too high block here with a solid block in front of it and a solid block behind it as well. You're going to place a single piece of glass underneath this block and then two more underneath that block right there with a solid block on the back. This is what you should have so far. Pretty straightforward. Now what you're going to do is you're going to jump up and on this front block here that is above the piece of glass in the front of the farm, you're going to place another piece of redstone dust with a solid block above it, kind of separating the two here. On the back, you're going to place a redstone torch Okay, so that's on the back like that with a piece of redstone dust that comes down around and then dig your way down and run that signal right into the piston. Now you're gonna take your first trap door, place it on top of the piston and then open it. Then put two pieces of glass here beside it. Another one down in the hole. As you can see, the redstone signal will still travel through because it is transparent with another one on top and then another one on top of that. This is where we are going to drop our zombie in place once we do get him down. Now you're going to come around to the front here and on this top block, you're going to place a sticky piston with a piece of glass attached to it. And finally, your lever is going to go in the front here, switching everything back and forwards. So as you can see here, we have a polarity that comes down and activates this piston, pushing the zombie up, or which will push the zombie up, moving the piece of glass out of the way as well too. And then when we hit the lever, the piston goes back down, the glass comes down with him, and whatever villager now drops into this little hole here should be protected and will not get attacked. You will only get attacked when we raise this up. All right, but now is probably the best time that you need to get your villager in place. So before you put the piston in place here, because you're obviously going to have a two block gap here where the villager, where, or sorry, where the zombie cannot jump up. So if you can just kind of coax him up and over and then down into that hole there, you should be good to go. And then you can replace your sticky piston with the piece of glass and everything should be good. Okay, once you get your zombie in place, you are going to want to make sure that he has a name tag so he doesn't despawn. Or, of course, make sure he is either holding on to an item or something else using the zombie collection system that we do have created. So now, as you can see, if we just flip the lever back and forwards here, everything is good to go. And when we pop him up, he will be exposed to the villager and then unexposed. Okay, now these next steps are dependent on which way you are bringing your villagers in, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to place three blocks above the farm, just like so. In the center block is we're going to place a activator rail. If your villagers are coming in from the left side, you want to put your detector rail on the opposite, so the right. And if they're coming in from the right side, put it in the opposite, which is left. So we are going to be bringing them in from the right here. So we're going to go detector rail on the left powered rail on the right with our activator rail in the center here. Behind the detector rail, okay, towards the back of the farm, we're going to place down three solid blocks with two more up on an angle 
beside it. Then we can place a temporary block or a glass block in front with our regular piston sitting on top of it. Behind the regular piston, we're going to place a repeater going into it with three or four redstone dust running up and into the block, as you can see. And then this is the core of the farm right here. Now all we want to do is run some glass out and around like this. Okay, so we should have a nice little hole right here in the center. Then we're going to bring it out into the front and then run our glass all the way back down so that everybody is contained or so that the chute is contained anyways. And we have this two block opening here in the lower half. Okay, now what you're going to do is from the detector rail, you're going to come out at least two blocks. But after the detector rail here, you want to place a powered rail. It does not have to be powered. Then we're just going to take our regular rails and run them down and out to wherever our villagers are going. Okay, but before we do that, we are going to finish this part of the farm. So all we have to do now, because once the villager drops down here, we need to be able to contain him. So we are going to place a trap door or a slab here. Does not matter. And then take your first button, place it on this block, and your second button, and place it on the dispenser there. Okay, and once you are all done, this is the curing system done and complete right here. Okay, you have to keep in mind that these blocks right here, they do have to be glass. So that way the villager does not take any, you know, suffocation or cramming damage when he comes through them. As well as this block right here needs to be glass as well. So now to finish the farm, all we're going to do is run three powered rails out from this dispenser and then three more regular rails and then that is off to or that is going to head off to our you know trading hall or whatever it is we are going to be putting our villagers in okay now if you would like because this upper dispenser here this is where we are going to put our splash potions of weakness and then this lower dispenser here this is where we are going to put our mine cards so if you would like you can run a hopper with a chest on top of it allowing you to have more splash potions than the nine original slots here and then same with the minecart below if you want to have more minecarts than the nine slots here just run a double hopper going into it with the chest above them again so once you have your chest here loaded with your minecarts this dispenser should start to fill up same thing with this chest up here just load it up with your splash potions of weakness and everything should be set and ready Okay, now for the activator system, let's say you have a villager breeder somewhere off in the distance and you have your minecarts running back to it in order to pick up the villagers and then head them back to the farm. And you want to have a villager prepped and waiting, kind of like what I did in my survival series. Here's what you're going to do is you're going to come anywhere down the line. It does not matter. Okay, but make it so that it's close to this farm and you're going to dig out a two block area like this and then run your powered rails going down and into it. Then what, so what you're going to do is, because the minecarts are running this way, in front of this rail, you're gonna place down a solid block and behind it, you're going to place a sticky piston and then behind the sticky piston, you're going to dig down, place a redstone torch underneath it. As you can see, it extends out and over top of the rail here. Then you're going to come back to the center of the farm here. Okay, you're gonna aim either at the button or the lever and you're going to find out which one of these two blocks if you stand on it you have access to all of these buttons so you can see here if I stand on this block which is one two three four blocks away from the farm I have access to all the levers here so what we're going to do is right beside me we're gonna place down a solid block we're gonna dig this one out too and place a solid block below me so that way I have this for reference with a solid block behind me so I know that this is where I have to stand and then we need to just basically line these suckers up so we're gonna dig this down so that we are one block below the redstone porch so that's three blocks in total and we're gonna join it up to that block over there Okay, so I have my trench dug. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a step ladder up to this block. If you want to put this block right in the ground and have the button on top, you can go for it. But what we're going to do is we're going to run our redstone torch, or sorry, our redstone signal down and around to the bottom of this block here. And now, as you'll see, if we just add our third button, once we press that, 
It retracts the piston, allowing whatever is behind it now to kind of head over our direction. We can now fill all of this in so that way it is not noticeable. Keep in mind that right here you are going to have to either place a glass block or a slab so that way it doesn't cut the redstone signal out. And now to get your villagers so that they are always prepped and ready, all we're going to do is run our powered rails along with our regular rails down and around the farm here. Or sorry, wherever our villager breeder is and carrying the villagers. Then we're going to turn the corner and if it does this, just remove the powered rail and run it so that it is in line with the other ones. This is what you want the corner to look like. Now we need to power all of these rail systems up here, probably add in a few more so that we don't get all jammed up. Okay, and our final step before we start importing villagers is we need to power the activator rail. So we're going to stick a redstone torch right there beside it. So that is one block in front of the activator rail. And then to prevent the villagers from burning up when they do turn into a zombie, we need to place two temporary blocks and then a solid block above the hole. And now finally, that is your build complete and ready right there. And now for the villager import system, you quite literally only need one minecart. So I did do some modifications here. This is just to ensure that they, you know, meet up with the hitbox of the minecart. You don't have to do this. I'll show you on the other one. So all we're going to do is send our minecart up and around and over. It should come around and pick up a villager. Yep, perfect. Now our villager is going to stay here waiting for us. You may want to enclose this in glass just to keep him protected. Once you're ready for him, all you have to do is hit the button. The activator rail will do its thing, same with the piston and detector rail, and you have your villager in place. Now all you need to do is place down a lectern or whatever workstation that it is, and do this until you get the specific trade that you want from the villager. So let's say we want blast protection. Now all we're gonna do is buy one book from them, or even just trade some paper with them in order to lock the trade in place. We're gonna activate the lever, exposing him to the villager. The villager will turn after about five to seven hits. We can then put the zombie back down because the block is there. As you will see, nobody is burning up. Now all we have to do is hit the lever, hitting him with the splash potion, smack him with a golden apple, and wait. Okay, once your villager has successfully turned back into a regular villager here. As you'll see, we'll get our discounted trades. Now all you have to do, you can repeat this as many times as you want. Let's say he's not down to one emerald yet, so you can just you know flick the lever and then repeat it over and over again. Once you have the specific trade and discount that you want, all you have to do is hit this button here. A minecart will be dispensed and your villager will be sent off to his location. Now all we need to do is hit this button. Our next villager will be placed in here for us. Another one will be collected and ready for us. Now we can just repeat this process. Does not matter which... Ooh, like, look at that, right? Exposing him to the zombie, redoing the whole system over again, and then we are set. Now I do want to keep in mind that you don't even really need to do the workstation part here. If you want, what you can do is expose him, turning him into a zombie, and then do the whole, you know, curing thing as well. And basically what's going to happen is this guy will always remember, once you get him in place, he's always going to remember that you're the guy that, you know, hooked him up and turned him back into a villager. And you can do all of your trade stuff inside your villager hall if you would prefer to. Okay, but that is, that is the setup right there. That is what it looks like. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. As I was saying about the glass panes here. You normally don't have to do that. I'll show you on this side over here. Okay, so this is the same setup that I have in my survival world. The only difference is that in the survival world, it's a three by three and not a two by two hole. And if we do the same thing, hit the button over here. Okay, we have no glass panes. Everything is working out successfully. And it scoops up a villager, no problem. So I think it just matters, you know, depends on how much flow you do have coming into this corner. But as you can see, the system is pretty much flawless. And if we just, okay, so we've loaded that up now. And as you can see, the system is just constant. Even if you do have to do the glass pane trick, you know, the system regardless still works like a charm. You always have a villager waiting. You always have a villager there for you. 
and at a matter of a press of a button, you quite literally have another villager to zombify and turn into a discounted tradesman. So, once again, that is a roundabout of what the entire system looks like. Do remember to name tag your zombie because as you can see there, you know, mine is no longer there anymore. So you do want to name tag your zombie. But other than that, that is the farm. Thank you so much for watching, you guys, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.